Yeah, I've, I've been fishing since 1981. We um, work off the west coast of Tassie here. It is one of the roughest coastlines in the world. There's nothing stopping the swells between here and uh, the Antarctic. My brother and I thought we'd pull our money together and buy a, a cray boat. It sounded like a good idea at the time. Bye! Did a trip with Bobby Patton uh, after I left high school. Uh, Swan declared I was going to be a fisherman after that trip. And six years later, I bought the Beatrice with my brother. The thing that drew us to it was the adventure, the freedom. Unfortunately, about eight years after we started fishing, the guy that I did my first trip with, Bob Patton, he and his crew were um, wiped out by a big wave at Granville and all drowned. Over the years, there were other people that we knew that were lost at sea, Johnny Fee and Wayne Rawlings on the Eastern Star. We have a wave ride out off Cape Sorrel, and quite often that's um, maxing out at 12 metres, 14 metres. Plenty of times we've worked, you know, five, six metres as well. It's like you're in a bloody elevator all day going up and down, up and down. And yeah, it's quite awesome actually, you've got this power coming in underneath you. As long as there's no wind. How are you there, Robbie? <laughs> there's not really acreages except for Strawn in Macquarie Harbour and Port Davy, and it's about 12 hours in between them. We had an experience up at the Conical Rocks near the Pyman River, and we got caught see this big wave coming and it was green. They got a break and I said to Baz, hang on Baz, but in this wave we had no windows left in the wheelhouse and my dog was running up on top of the pots. Her name was Amy. We were still in a hell of a predicament, you know, a big sea on, no windows. Finally got off the conical, it was about a mile out and then we got hit by another big wave. And I looked up the bow and I thought, oh no, I can't see my dog. Trying to find this black dog in the water. I thought well, there's no way in the world we're going to find her. Got out on deck and started tidying things up. Moving one of the pots and there was my dog curled up in one of the pots. In the same area, a few years later, a guy called Johnny Fee wasn't as lucky as us and he got wiped out by a big wave. Lost his life and the life of his crew, Michael Cadby. But his son, Peter, managed to survive. He was picked up by another boat by Wayne Rawlings on the Eastern Star, who unfortunately six months later, he was wiped out himself in the same area, Harbour Bay. Wayne and his two crew were lost. It does make you wonder about going to sea and the families, it certainly would, would have been hard on them. First friend he wants to talk to you, okay? After John went, it really hit home to people around the storm, just how dangerous it can be out there. There was one time when my wife knew I was coming home and we got hit by a wave just south of Cape Sorrel. Wiped my radio out and a lot of water come in and they call you up factories and ask you what time you'll be in and they couldn't get hold of me. So I ended up getting in the seaplane up to find out where I was. I've got a daughter and a son. And my son ne never took to it and I never encouraged them either. Can I get out? The thing that always draws me back to fishing is the adventure and the freedom. Some of the beautiful things you see, like working overnight, we've got some good footage of pulling gear at midnight at the cliffs between Granville and Trial, and my crew working, Jack, who's been with me for 10 years now, you'd think he'd be scared, but it become part of the job for him. Pulling that gear, we were only about 10 metres off the rocks, you know, with the Southern Ocean coming in on us. One of my favourite places to work is High Rocky Point. Southwest corner of Tassie, very remote. You can begin the anchorage, protected from the swell, but you know you've got to go out and quite often four or five minutes of swell. Now I'm 64. This is the end of my life as a fisherman. It's been a really good adventure. Having the uh, the weather as your mistress dictating your life. So this is probably one of the last times I'll be on the RNK. Hey, what are you doing? on the job. Gotcha. There's no greater feeling at the end of a trip after you spent a week or ten days at sea and being at the mercy of the elements out there, coming through Hell's Gates and into Macquarie Harbour and then finishing up in a lovely little spot like Mill Bay. And then you might have a week or two weeks off and then you feel like doing it all over again. It's that calling of the sea and that bit of adventure.